Oh, yes, our presidents love to talk about action. And boy, that FDR, he knew how to do it. I'm R.J. Eskow, and this is the Zero Hour. Some action would be great right about now. Okay, now, in the last hour, we heard from Patrick Ruby, who told us about what he calls the National Freeloader League and all the tax benefits that um, that our football billionaires are receiving at uh, at your expense and mine. Um, and we'd like to change that. We'd like to get the National Football League and its franchises away from their culture of dependency. See, the National Football League and the football franchises have become dependent. The tax breaks we give them, the other assistance we give them, the stadiums we build them, the zoning uh, laws we break or, or, or nullify on their behalf have made them dependent. And we want them to lear- be able to think for themselves, the billionaires who own the franchises, the, the multimillionaires who are paid 20 30 $40 million as retirees from running the NFL, we want to get them off their culture of dependence. So I say this now to the owners, the franchisees, the leaders, the commissioners, the members of the National Football League, help us help you. Help us help you get off your culture of dependency and stand for yourself. Get out of the 47% that are leaning on the, okay, I can go on forever like this, but I won't. So we heard from Patrick on the NFL, and we're going to be on the NFL. We're not getting off the NFL. We're we're not getting off any of these major corporations that, uh, which is what the NFL is, that um, suckle at the public teat, to use a phrase that probably Rush Limbaugh would be more comfortable speaking than I am. It makes me uncomfortable. I'm not Alan Simpson or one of those people. But anyway, that's what they do. So we'll stay on them. And last last hour, we also heard from Cole Stangler from In These Times about the TPP. And what's the through line between the NFL and the TPP? Again, you know, uh, free trade, it's not an inevitability. It's not a force of nature, what they call free trade. These global deals that benefit certain forms of corporations, that give corporations the ability to sue sovereign governments for their political decisions to protect their own people, whether it be from fracking or environmental pollution of other kinds or, or, or uh, mercury in the tuna, whatever it might be. Uh, these are not forces of nature. This is another form of government helping corporations. So we're going to be all about that here on the Zero Hour. That's our new name. I know our uh, material still says Take Action News, but it still says Carl Frisch and David Schuster, the previous host, too. So we'll get on that. But... Um, so we talked with Cole Stangler, and we talked with Richard Fiesta about uh, cuts to Social Security, which uh, Rich is the uh, head of the National Association. Uh, let me, I never get these things right. Alliance for Retired Americans. Uh, what are we going to be talking about in this hour? Well, uh, we're going to continue on the theme that, uh, you know, who's really getting a handout in this country. We'll be talking to my friend Dave Johnson about why it's expensive to be poor, and Dave has the lowdown on that. We're going to go back to West Virginia, which we covered extensively after the initial poisoning of the drinking water there. We'll be talking about what's going on now in West Virginia, and um, we will also be talking about uh, the new atheism. One of the other things we do or want to do here on um, what we used to call Take Action News is talk about the big issues that are facing us and not uh, with any fear of getting into a little bit of controversy. Okay, religion is still a major force of life in most Americans' uh, daily inner workings, if you want to call it inner lives, and most of the world's. We'll be talking about religion and we won't be taking reflexive positions for or against any religion, for or against disbelief. We'll be talking to a lot of people and challenging a lot of assumptions. It's our feel. Well, you'll hear more. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil that whole segment by telling you now what we're going to do then. But um, I do want to talk a little bit more about the conversation with Rich Fiesta and Social Security because I think it's very important here. You know, one of the things we hope we called it the flow in our our, our last iteration of this program, which was the breakdown on We Act News and. The idea behind the flow is that, you know, if you could see all the news events that are influencing your lives, all the economic forces influencing our lives, uh, all the cultural forces influencing our lives, if you could view them from, uh, you know, 50,000 miles in space, uh, you'd see these sort of shifting forces of economics and money flowing through and affecting the way we look at everything from 
uh, popular culture to technology to politics and that there are underlying tectonic economic forces at work here and social security is a great example of that uh, you know here we have news media who are obsessed with the idea that social security is going broke which it's not by any reasonable definition of the term broke uh, it will have a certain shortfall in 30 years unless you do what vast majorities of the public from left to right want, which is uh, uh, to get rid of the artificial cap that exempts millionaires and billionaires from having their higher income support, Social Security. Social Security should actually be expanded, but there's a cultural kind of... It's fascinating. It's like being an anthropologist visiting... Uh, a hidden tribe when I go to D.C. and talk to, for example, the Treasury of the Secretary, which I did when he was Tim Geithner about Social Security, and realize that, or whether it's uh, NPR uh, broadcasters or anyone else, and realize that you're not just fighting misunderstandings about the economics of Social Security or the actuarial workings of it, you're fighting a kind of cultural binding force that says in order to be a member of our tribe you have to believe certain things and one of the things you have to believe is that social security needs to be cut there's a point in every conversation you have inside the beltway establishment about social security where it's almost like there's a children of the damned look in the eyes of the people you're talking to well they'll say where they will say as martha raddatz did during one of the presidential debates abc broadcaster well everybody knows you need to cut social security one of the things we're going to do here on the zero hour is point out that a lot of times when you hear hear the phrase well everybody knows dot 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 you're really repeating folk ways and uh, cultural brainwashing, not not analytical truth, because we're all about analytical truth here on the Zero Hour. And when it comes to America's retirement crisis, we are approaching the Zero Hour. So that's going to be a regular theme for us. But meanwhile, stick around. We'll have Dave Johnson talking about, uh, well, not to be uh, too folksy about it, but in Dave's words, why it sucks to be poor. And we'll be talking about uh, these other critical issues as well, which if I had my act together, I'd be telling you right now. But I will tell you this. It's important that you stay and listen because you're going to be informed by what happens next. I'm R.J. Escow, and this is The Zero Hour. We'll be right back.